Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a product roundup of sorts where I'm going to be talking about all, well not all, but some of, or at least the ones that I own and have tried out, um, the products that we kind of hear about and that are very hyped up here on YouTube and Instagram and have been in some cases for many years. I got this idea from Samantha Ravendahl. I'm really sorry if I'm pronouncing her name incorrectly. She filmed this a while ago, I think. It's like, all right, that's a really good idea. Let's do this. Really quick before we get going, I want to tell you guys what I have on my lips right now, just because you guys tend to ask when I wear bold colors like this. This is the Alexis Wren and ColourPop Ultra Matte Lip in the color Little Weapon. I don't know who Alexis Wren is, but I just want to tell her. If I was going to create a lipstick, it would have been something around here. I love this color. It's the absolute perfect summer red. I'm really bummed that I got it now when it's basically over, but I'm gonna wear the shit out of this until the clock runs out in the season. So anyway, let's just get started. I'm going to attempt to go in some semblance of an order, but who knows what's gonna happen. I just have shit in front of me and I'm gonna pick it up and tell you what I think. So I'm gonna rate all of these products on the scale of yes, they're worth the hype. No, they're not worth the hype or meh which means I can go either way about it. I might repurchase it, I might not. It is what it is kind of thing. I only have one primer and it's actually kind of on the newer side compared to a lot of these other things. And it is the Milk Makeup Blur Stick. I got this a few weeks ago. I've been trying it out almost every single day ever since. I feel like I'm kind of an aficionado when it comes to smoothing primers. I love the Smashbox one. The Tarte one's pretty good. And I've heard so many things about this one. I've seen so many videos about it, so many posts about it, and I gotta tell you, I don't, I don't know, man, like, I don't really see much of a difference with this one than any other ones that I've tried in the past. If anything, I feel like this one isn't quite as, what's the word I'm looking for, heavy duty, which is kind of what I'm into, plus I'm not a super big fan of this rolling it on the skin kind of thing. I can I can be a little bit of a germaphobe and this feels extremely unsanitary to me, especially the longer that you have it. I mean, I don't know if there's any logic to that fear or not. I just know what I tend to go for myself. I've tried using this under multiple types of foundations. I've tried a few different types of application techniques with it. The truth is once I kind of get this on my pores, my large the pores are right here and in the center of my forehead. I've actually even tried powdering this primer, which sounds really weird, but sometimes I actually powder the color corrector under my eyes as well because the thing is like once you apply something like this and you go in with your brush and you're kind of swirling it around even if you kind of tap on top of it you're gonna move the product and there's really no point in putting this in very specific areas in order to kind of minimize texture or pores and then just kind of moving the product off of where you just applied it. Does that make sense what I'm trying to say? Even doing that, I can't see a significant difference in the size of my pores using this primer versus honestly not using any primer at all. It could be because my pores are so giant, there's no helping me at this point, but I am not it's not working for me. It doesn't break me out though. That's pretty cool. A lot of smoothing primers do break me out. I'll, I'll give credit where credit's due there. I'm concerned. This is a no. Not worth the hype. I only have one foundation. This is the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. When this bad boy came out, I feel like it was the end of last year or maybe even before that. I can't really remember. It was a big damn deal all over YouTube. And Hourglass is definitely one of my favorite brands. So I'm always down to try any of their stuff that they come out with. I have the Makeup Forever Sticks, which also were pretty well hyped up there for a while. But once these came along, they, like everybody kind of replaced these for the Makeup Forever. The Forever ones, I liked. I actually had to powder them so heavily that I might as well just get a matte foundation. I kind of have the same issue with this one. This is a foundation I think is really good for people who have normal to dry skin, but I don't really have any problems with it. I do have to set it. I do have to prime. What I do like about it is the way that it looks on the skin and the coverage is oh, so amazing. So I will say this was a yes, worth the hype. For concealer, I have the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. Everybody is still on one about these. In some ways, I am very on the fence about these concealers, mainly because I'm 85% sure these guys are breaking me out. I try so much makeup almost every day. I'm putting something new on my face, so at times it can be difficult to get to the bottom of which thing I've used is causing the reaction that I'm having. Consistently when I use these, I'll end up with at least a tiny breakout of some sort. Now, 
Outside of that, they do perform really nicely. I think you do have to be careful though because they can be a little bit drying and they definitely can look a little cakey if you go to ham sandwich with them. But if you use them correctly, they are gorgeous. I have a collection that I have in my professional makeup kit and I use these on models, especially when I'm doing a no makeup makeup look on them because I can use this to spot treat or brighten up the under eye area. And if I use the right amount, I don't have to use a lot of product to get the flawless finish that I'm going for. So I would say these are a yes, worth the hype. This is the RCMA No Color Powder. I feel like this saw its real day in the sun around, I don't know, I wanna say late 2015 and most of 2016. I don't hear a lot of people talking about it anymore. I was kind of torn between talking about this one or the Laura Mercier powder, but I think this one got a lot more uh, attention. As you can see, I don't really have a lot of this left. I've been using the crap out of it. I do have another one that I have in my makeup kit, and I use this one from time to time. Days that like I'm going to the gym or running errands, I will use this powder to set all over my face. That's really got nothing to do with the performance of the powder. It's just that like, I have a lot of face powder now. I'm started hoarding it I think and this just doesn't get pulled out that much but I will say for the price and for what it does which is set your makeup and really locks it in place for a long time without altering the color of anything that it goes on top of that alone definitely makes this worth the hype to me and it's so funny when I started seeing everyone on YouTube and Instagram tripping out over this I was like this has been in my makeup kit forever. It's so funny when you see like pro products that artists have been using for a really long time start to become a lot more user friendly or more mainstream in the beauty community, if you will. So because it's a classic, because it always gets the job done, I'm gonna say yes, it is worth it. Cover FX Custom Cover Enhancer Drops. I have the um, actual foundation cover drops that you're supposed to mix into your foundation and I also have the bronzer drops. Um, my thing with these, these, my thing with these, <laughs> I could go either way with these because when I first heard of these, I was completely blown away, excited, inspired, holy crap, what a great idea. But in my mind and in my opinion, especially with the coverage drops, this feels like a pro product. As a pro makeup artist, something like this would be really good to lighten or darken foundations or increase coverage into already existing foundations that you have so you don't have to buy a crap ton of shade ranges. So in that respect, when I saw this, I thought it was great. For the average consumer, I don't know, man. I guess this would really depend on two things. Number one, do you change color a lot? Because if you're like me and you sunless tan and you can kind of bounce from shade to shade any given time of the week, this might be good to have because you can easily adjust the shade of your foundation. Number two, are you a person who likes to wear a lot of different types of formulas of foundation? If you're the type of person who only wears full coverage, you don't need this because you already have that full coverage built into your existing formula. But if you're the type of person who doesn't want to invest in a lot of foundation and just wants to adjust it as you see fit, then I can see where something like this would be cool, but I don't think everyone needs it. This is the bronzer one. I do think it's pretty cool as well, but then again, like, I don't know a whole lot of people who use liquid bronzer, you know what I mean? Like if you're a cream contour, cream bronzer, like die hard, that's pretty much the only way you go about your business. In that respect, yes, I can see how this would be useful. I've had this for a long time. And I think I've used it twice because it's just not my preferred method of applying my makeup. I do not have the um, custom highlighter drops, you know what I'm talking about, the shimmery ones, because I just already know that's not gonna be something I'm into. But as far as these are concerned, I'm gonna give it a meh. Two setting sprays here, and I wanna make a blanket statement about setting sprays in general being worth the hype. If you have a setting spray that is targeted for a specific use, then yes, I do see the merit and the hype around that, but I've seen some pretty crazy, pretty damn crazy priced um, setting sprays out there. I feel like I saw one not too long ago that was like 90 bucks, and I just can't imagine a scenario where it's $90 worth of good. I feel like in a lot of ways, once you get to the more hydrating mists, you're kind of getting in the area of a lot of this shit might be pretty similar and almost too similar to be able to determine whether or not it's worth paying $90. Actually, not even too similar to deter. I, I can tell you right now, it's not worth paying $90 for a setting spray. Um, I love setting sprays. I have a ton of them. But the ones that I think are the most popular that get hyped up a lot is the Urban Decay All Nighter and the MAC Fix Plus. But they're very different types of sprays. I had MAC Fix Plus in my collection, in my midst for seven years. 
a really, really, really long time. I think this is one of the best makeup products in the world. I use it constantly. I have to have it in my makeup kit. This particular setting spray is good for you if you suffer with dryness. If you go through a stage of doing your makeup, let's say you're doing things like baking and you've got a lot of product on the skin, a lot of powder on the skin, spraying your face with something like this or setting spray along these lines will help take down the powdery effect. It'll make your skin look a lot more fresh and skin-like. But if you're oily, this is not what you wanna use to actually set your makeup in place. This is good for the overall appearance of your makeup fresh, dewy, and I also use this on my makeup brushes for my eyeshadow all the time. I don't think, for the most part, I ever put a shimmery um, product on my eyelid without wetting my brush with Fix Plus first, because number one, it just kind of helps the product grab onto the brush so it doesn't fall over my face, and number two, it makes it look a lot more metallic and foil. Like for example, I use it today to get this eyeshadow to stick to my eye. This is 100,000 million percent worth the hype as far as I'm concerned. Honestly, so is this one. I'm combination eye gear, uh, pretty damn oily in the summer, I've noticed this year especially. Um, so something like this, which is going to hold on and lock in my makeup for an extended period of time is 200 million percent worth the hype and it actually works like there have been times where I haven't had this in my collection and really haven't felt like I needed a makeup setting spray like truly setting setting it in place locking it in place type spray and then I'll get it back I recently got this one because Urban Decay sent it to me and I did a little experiment get a little scientist scientisty science scientific up in this piece and uh I've been spraying this on my face before I go to the gym every day and I do CrossFit so like I'm not in there you know dicking around like it's serious we work there's no air conditioner in the building it is hot and this actually does make my makeup stay on longer it's crazy it works it freaking works really ones that are this heavy duty in terms of helping your makeup last for a long time tend to have a lot of alcohol in them which are very drying and can kind of age your skin over time so you don't want to use these every day just when you need to stay. That's my interpretive dance. I'm hoping you know what I mean by that. I think I just vogued. Anyway, so yeah, 100% worth it. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance. Look how disgusting and you dirty girl. She is filthy. Um, as far as this being worth the hype, I just have one thing to say. Hell yes it is. Hell yes it is. I freaking love this eyeshadow palette. I've loved it intensely ever since I first got it. It's my favorite eyeshadow palette. It's great for people who like neutrals and it's really great if you love reds and magentas, which I do. They're my favorite. I don't even really have a whole lot to say about this one. Just to say 200 million percent 100% worth every bit of hype it's ever gotten. I literally do not think I've ever heard a bad review about it. Um, I love it. I love it. She's a uh, She's a baddie, I have to say. Just don't even think I need to go any further with it because I'll just go on. I just start like serenading it or like writing a sonnet about it. I love it so much. So that's all there is to say, 100% worth it. The Kat Von D Shade Light Contour Kit. Um, I'm gonna talk about this one in specific, but as far as contour kits in general go, if they're worth the hype, I'm gonna do a, well, I'm thinking about doing, actually I'm gonna do, I don't know what's happening. Something contour kit related is coming. Contour 101 is coming. As far as contour kits specifically go, God, that's hard to say. Um, I think that they may or may not be worth it. Typically, like in this case, they come with multiple shades and you probably only got the one face. And luckily for us, Kat Von D came out with refillable ones. I think Anastasia's is refillable as well. But for the most part, if you're in a situation where you have to keep repurchasing a contour kit because the shade that you're using keeps hitting pan or running out, you're better off finding like a bronzer or a face powder that would work for you than having to keep buying a whole kit. Does that make sense? That's what I'm trying to say. So this one I think is the one one that is the most hyped up, the one that most people love, the one that most people talk about. And I will say, it is a really good contour kit. These highlighting powders are pigmented, my friend. Like when I first got this palette, I almost kind of thought I didn't like it because they were so pigmented that it looked really like unnatural. I know, right? Like I'm talking about natural makeup, but it was a little much even for me. Now I've kind of figured them out. I haven't ordered my second one yet. I will soon, but I'm just in the middle of trying out a crap ton of contour kits at the moment. However, this is one that I could see consistently repurchasing and making sure that I have in my collection. So I would say, yes, this is worth the hype. Asha Denona eyeshadow palettes. I only have one. 
I don't know if the formula of this one is any different than the formula of the brown one or the blue green or the purple blue. I don't know if it's different than the Sun palette. I can just tell you from my perspective how I feel about this. Um, I, I think it's really hard to say if this is worth the hype or not or worth the money even. Um, these are so expensive. This palette was $170. One of the most expensive single items of beauty related accoutrement I've ever purchased. Um, $170 is the kind of money I would spend on a serum, like a deep badass skin serum that's going to change some shit forever type thing. And I should have pal I know I'm saying all this stuff, but like I'm the dumbass that bought it. Don't get me, don't get me started. I figured getting this one was going to be a good way to kind of get my feet wet with the form, feet wet with the formula and see how I felt. And the thing is, if you're going to have a product that is this expensive, it needs to be better than any other product that is on the market. I'm sorry. I, I don't, I understand there's a lot of products in these, in these pans that are in here. Like I get that. Um, and that's not that they don't work well. I actually filmed a first impressions on this palette. I'll link it up here somewhere. And at the time, I had really bad things to say about it. I have since played with it a lot more and I do like the shadows a lot more than I did that first day. And even having grown an appreciation for the formula as a whole, I still feel the same way. I still feel like this is way too much money for an eyeshadow palette. I have to say it's not worth it because I don't ever pull this out, ever, ever. I hardly ever pull for this thing. And I'm willing to bet any amount of money except for a professional makeup artist Nobody who has bought these things uses these on a daily basis. And if you're not using it on a day, at least almost daily, I don't think it would be worth it. I'm gonna say no, it's not worth it. But they are nice, so it's really gonna be up to you. Just not nice enough. I don't think anything would ever be worth this much money in my mind. It would have to be, it would have to be so good that I never wanted to buy anything else ever again, and that's not what happened. I feel like I'm trying really hard to justify myself here. I don't wanna talk shit about Natasha Denona or her products, but that's just how I feel. So I'm gonna say no, not worth it. So Becca highlighters, and we're gonna talk specifically about Champagne Pop in a second too. Um, yes, just to answer your question, Becca highlighters are worth the hype. They are the most unique, beautiful formula. I'm not like about that glow life as much as other people might be, but I will say these are kind of the grandfather Mac Daddy highlighter um, OGs for a reason, if you will. I, I think that they are worth the price. I have Opal and I have Champagne Pop, and then I also have the face palette that had Champagne Pop in it because I wanted to try the other, other highlighter that was in there. But, um, I'll just talk specifically about Champagne Pop for a second. I do gotta say, man, this is a really unique, beautiful highlighter. It's got this really cool peachy gold undertone, and yeah, as an individual product, Champagne Pop is also very much worth the hype. This is the only brush I have, and she's looking a little worse for the wear, but I have to mention it because this is the only single brush I can think of that was ever hyped up really, really hardcore, and this is the NARS Eda brush. I got mine back in 2014, I believe. I went through a phase where I used it quite a bit, and I can honestly say I rarely, if ever, pick this thing up now. Um, I think at the time, a contour brush was a pretty revolutionary idea. It also happened to be around the time contour kits were starting to come out, so it was like, you know, it was meant to be, I guess. But this brush is like 60 bucks. I've never used this thing, and after using it, felt like, damn, I don't know why I don't pick this up more. My contour looks so much better today than it does when I don't use it. So if you don't have it yet, you're on the fence about it, you wanna pick it up because everybody has it and everybody's talked about it at some point or the other, I gotta say, it's not worth it. So this is a no for me voice is about to go. It's a good thing I'm done now. Hey right, guys, that's the end of my video. I just thought it might be kind of fun and kind of cool to talk about just a bunch of different products that I definitely see either being brought up or I've been asked about many, 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 many times. Let me know down below if there's any other products along these lines that you would like to know about because maybe if I get enough of them together again later down the road, oh my gosh, I'm so tired of Game Talk Straight. If I get enough together again, later down the road. I will do like a part two of this. I gotta say, Miss Samantha, this was a good idea. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please check the down bar for links to all my social media platforms. Come hang out with me on Snapchat, please, please, please. I'm very active on there. Um, make sure you subscribe if you have not. It's the only way you're gonna know when I have another video coming out. And even then, you might not if you don't hit the notification button. It's somewhere around here. It's in the shape of a bell. If you hit that, then you will be notified when I upload again. I will be uploading again. I don't know why I said it like that. I guess I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a wonderful day. See you next time.